Hello students, I am Mrs. Sadaf Khan before you all and I am going to uh, tell you about something very informative and interesting about nutrition in plants. So as you all know, there are two types of uh, forms, living and non-living. Okay, And living things, they move, they grow, they reproduce, for all this they need food. Without food, life cannot exist okay whatever energy we are getting for, for to carry out different activities we are getting from food so let's talk about today nutrition in plants also okay even plants which we find around us they also need food without food they will also die so in this chapter we are going to deal about different types of nutrition that is autotrophic nutrition, heterotrophic nutrition and what are the uh, replenishment of nutrients in the soil okay so first of all let me tell you what is food what is food food is anything we eat okay anything which we eat be it uh, if I talk about um, dairy products if I talk about vegetables if I talk about fruits whatever we eat and after eating that we get energy okay that is called food so a substance that is eaten by any living organism in order to carry out day-to-day -day activities is called food and what is nutrition nutrition can be defined as the process by which an organism take in food and uses it to produce energy now we have two forms of nutrition First is autotrophic nutrition as you can see in this table also which is in so you can see the table which is before you all this is autotrophic nutrition before you all and heterotrophic nutrition and further heterotrophic nutrition is divided into saprophytic plants parasitic plants insectivorous plants and symbiotic plants okay now let me tell you something about autotrophic nutrition okay as you all know that plants are producers okay what are producers producers means they are making the things on their own do we make food for the plants and give them to eat no your mom must be making for you does your have you have you ever seen your mom your aunt anyone preparing food for the plants and giving them to eat no plants they are making the food on their own only plants are there only green plants are called producers you must be having a then answer in your mind even we as human beings are making their own food no children we do not fall under the category of autotrophs we come under the category of heterotrophs because whatever we are eating we are getting the products either from plants or from animals so we are not autotrophic we don't have autotrophic nutrition we come under the category of heterotrophic nutrition only green plants they come under the category of autotrophic nutrition so plants make their own food by utilizing light that is the sunlight then water and carbon dioxide what is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is see just breathe out your like this do like this the hot air which you can feel on your palm that is carbon dioxide we are taking in oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide the atmosphere is all having oxygen and carbon dioxide mixed together and what is what we as human beings or living things what are we doing we taking all oxygen because we need it to breathe and we are giving out carbon dioxide now what is happening see nature has got a balance in everything now what plants are doing they are taking in this carbon dioxide which is given out by all the living organisms okay they're utilizing it to make their food so as I told you plants make their own food by the process of photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight water and carbon dioxide so 
all these three they club together and what happens after this the plant is giving out two products first product is ox or starch which the plant is utilizing on its own and the second by product it is giving out is oxygen which all the living organisms all be it uh, animals be it human beings be it a small animal or a big animal everyone is utilizing that okay so plants make their own food by utilizing light water and carbon dioxide by a process called photosynthesis now what is photosynthesis if i talk about you can see over here photosynthesis means light photo means light and synthesis means building up okay so now what is happening photosynthesis is a process that involves light okay light is there and with that light what the plant is doing with the help of carbon dioxide and water they are all clubbing up together and what is the by product what is the product starch starch and oxygen okay if you see starch is the product and oxygen this is the by product which is used by all the living organisms as i told you okay now there are different activities in this also which you can carry out and these are very interesting to know whether the green pigment chlorophyll is necessary for make uh, for the process of photosynthesis and all that you can just read out once you go through the chapter now the very most important thing is carbon dioxide see carbon dioxide where the plant cells getting this carbon dioxide from carbon dioxide is get the plants is getting from its surrounding from the atmosphere okay plants taken carbon dioxide from the air present in the atmosphere now how is this uh, entering in the plant you must have seen the plants take a leaf okay i'll show you i'll explain you also this is the leaf you must all have seen and if you turn the leaf upside down you will find small small holes on the leaf these are known as stomata okay what are these known as stomata okay now as i told you for the process of photosynthesis sunlight is very much required in case the sunlight is not there there would be no proper photosynthesis or although it will take but not a proper one if i uh, you must have noticed in your houses also if you keep any plant inside your house what happens after a few days it becomes very dull and eventually day a day comes when it dies it has no more life why because sunlight which was very much required for the plant we did not provide it okay so it's very important for a plant to get sunlight now what happens you have carbon dioxide okay carbon dioxide is there co2 which is carbon dioxide it is present in the air which is all around the plant what is happening the co2 the carbon dioxide is entering through the, through the stomata and what happens the plant they are utilizing these Uh, carbon dioxide and in return what are they giving out oxygen which is the by product of photosynthesis they are making out they are giving out starch starch what happens starch so that is utilized by the plant here only okay but oxygen they are giving out fine now see stomata are pores in a leaf mostly on the under surface each pore is surrounded by a pair of guard cells guard cells can change the shape to open and close the stomata okay now
so there are certain conditions that has to be needed to be fulfilled to perform photosynthesis in plant first is presence of chlorophyll chlorophyll is the green pigment which is found in the leaves what is what is the function of chlorophyll what happens the sunlight is falling on the plants and chlorophyll being green in color it observes it traps that sunlight and helps in the process of photosynthesis then presence of light as i told you sunlight is very much required all the plants make their food during the daytime then presence of carbon dioxide and presence of water all these four things are very important in case any one of it absent then photosynthesis does not take place properly now what is chlorophyll chlorophyll is a green pigment in the chloroplast of the leaves it is due to this pigment only that the leaves they appear green in color and chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis sunlight next is sunlight which we know that light energy is required to initiate the process of photosynthesis there are different activities which you can read on later on the uh, for uh, knowing the its importance of uh, chlorophyll for knowing the importance of water and all you will read it on later on i'm just briefing you the chapter so then water which is very much required for the plants see the plants has two types of tissues for transportation okay the plants all the green plants they have two types of tissues for transportation of substances to its different part first they have phylum and the other one is xylem so the starch the starch produced by the leaf is taken to different parts of the plant by a tissue called phylum whereas the water and minerals are transported to various parts of the plant by a tissue called xylem okay as i told you all the plants they have two types of tissues one is phylum and the other one is xylem okay so the starch whatever the plant the plant is making food food is uh, made in the form of starch what the once the food is ready so it is the duty of phylum to uh, transport that ready made that starch to all the different parts of the plant and it is the duty of the xylem to transport water and minerals which are required for the proper growth of the plant okay now photosynth importance of photosynthesis photosynthesis is an essential phenomena for survival of life on earth photosynthesis nahi hoga to life exists nahi kar sakti why because as i told you during the process of photosynthesis what happens oxygen is given out and oxygen is required by all the living organisms which are found on the earth without oxygen we cannot survive at all okay if you stop breathing for 2 minutes you cannot survive close your mouth and try you won't be able to do that so oxygen is very important and uh, from where are we getting that oxygen we are getting from plants and plants where is uh, how are they making they are making during the process of photosynthesis so photosynthesis enables green plants to prepare their own food okay agar photosynthesis nahi hoga to green plants cannot make their own food and this process converts sun's energy into the energy which is required by all forms of life okay and we all directly or indirectly everyone is depending on is a, or dependent on plants even if uh, those uh, who are vegetarian sorry non vegetarians they are directly or indirectly they are eating plant because if we are eating other animals and the other animals where are they feeding on they are feeding on plants if i talk about if i am a non vegetarian and i take mutton where i am getting this mutton from goat 
and goat is what is goat eating that goat is eating grass and what is uh, grass all plants green plants so directly or indirectly all the plant all the living organisms they are dependent on green plants for so, and green plants are the producers okay then oxygen which is very essential for the survival which is very very important for survival of any form of life on earth we are getting that oxygen from plant okay and during the process of photosynthesis only plants give out oxygen on which we are dependent okay so in short we can say that life is impossible on earth without oxygen in case oxygen is not there life is not there and oxygen where are we getting from photosynthesis no other means is there we can get oxygen from in a natural form only photosynthesis is there through which we get the oxygen okay then comes the heterotrophic nutrition you can all see on your screen also here yeah. heterotrophic nutrition so this mode of nutrition in which organisms they cannot make their own food in autotrophic they were making their own food on their own but in heterotrophic they cannot make their own food they are dependent on others for their food okay so heterotrophic nutrition can be further subdivided into four parts insectivorous plants insectivorous plants saprophytic plants parasitic plants and symbiotic plants if i talk about insectivorous plants what are insectivorous plants you must have heard also these plants what do they do they eat insects why why do they eat insects why don't they make their own food you must be having this in your mind so these plants what happens they grow in the places where there are less nutrients available okay whether there are less nutrients available in the soil and the in the areas that lack sunlight where sunlight is not able to reach properly there are different types of forest you must have learnt in your previous classes they are very dense dense forest lot of trees are there they are so tall that even sunlight cannot penetrate okay but still life is existing there there you will find lot of insectivorous plants where the sunlight is not able to reach properly or these plants they don't get sufficient nutrients from the soil okay so such plants what they do they obtain their food from other organisms okay what do they do they eat insects and the example of such plants are venus fly trap pitcher plant and sundew okay you can see in the picture also here see venus fly trap has a pair of lobes on its petiole okay what is petiole here you must you can see see what is this you must have seen here it has got these structures like this hai na so these lobes show rapid shutting movement when an insect sits on it thus trapping it inside the edges of the lobes have short stiff hair like structures which prevent the prey from escaping what happens any insect sits here what happens as soon as the insect sits here it closes the leaf closes and the insect is all trapped in it so and once the insect is trapped in it what happens photos or uh, this plants they eat and start eating this insects whatever nutrients they are wanting to grow it gets from the insects okay now a pitcher plant is named so because of its structure that resembles a pitcher what is a pitcher children you must have heard of this word pitcher pitcher is a sort of if i say a deep cavity filled with fluid 
it's sort of if I say it's something like this okay it's a pitcher okay a pot sort of thing so a pitcher plant is named because of its structure that resembles a pitcher now what happens whenever any insect sits on it any insect sits on it what happens is muscus okay there's a muscus it is all the pitcher is slippery due to the muscus it secretes your all muscus is there okay it's a slippery sort of uh, liquid as soon as the insect sits on it it uh, goes inside now what happens once the insects goes inside it the pitcher also has a flap like structure at its mouth which shuts tightly when the prey falls inside it now same thing here you can see sundew plant is also there it is also insectivorous plant because all these three plants as I have named pitcher plant uh, then sundew and venus flytrap they all eat insects then saprophytic plants what are saprophytic plants see saprophytic plants or saprophytes are those that they obtain their nutrition from dead and decaying remains of plants and animals these animal plants have no leaves and usually they are white in color or either they are colorless or they would be uh, white in color they do not have any leaves at all okay what happens these uh, plants they grow on dead and decaying remains of plants and animals okay if any animal die or any plants die they start growing on that okay and they take the nutrition from the remains of that dead and decaying plant or animal okay so and the uh, example of the saprophytic plants are coral uh, root and indian pipe okay now if i talk about parasitic plants what are parasitic plants a parasitic plant is that which depends on other plant for its nutrition okay like rafflesia mistletoe and dodder are example of parasitic plants these plants what they do they grow on other plants okay they grow on other plants and what uh, uh, where are they getting the nutrition from the plant on which it grows all the nutrients it takes from there and uh, this parasitic plants grow on other plants and there it start taking all the nutrition from the other plant the host plant is also sometimes it is also even killed you must have heard of the word amar bale okay this is very common you must have seen in your surroundings okay this is a, a very common uh, plant especially found in northern india it grows on other other plants and what happens a time comes when this plant kills the plant on which it grows okay then comes symbiotic plants you can see on the screen also symbiotic plants in this mode of nutrition like the parasitic plant these uh, plant also takes benefit from the other plants but the difference is what, hap what was happening in the parasitic plant it was killing the plant on which it was growing but now what happens with this symbiotic plant what happens like if i talk about this a plant is there um, so if i say about give you an example of the cigar is lichens and ribosium live uh, rhizopium living the root nodules of leguminous plants the example of symbiotic plants they're helping each other okay if plant a is uh, giving help to plant b hai na? So what happens plant b is return is also getting something from plant a there's a mutual concept okay you do this for me i will do this for you okay but in this uh, parasitic plant it was absent only the plant which was growing was getting the benefit and on which it was going growing if after some time that plant used to die but here in the symbiotic uh, nutrition what happens both the plants they are driving some or the other advantage from the other plant okay so 
Lichens are a group of plants formed by a symbiotic relationship between a fungus and a photosynthetic plant. In this case, the photosynthetic plant is an algae. The algal part provides nutrient and the fungal part provides protection. Okay, this is a very beautiful example. Then come to the next one. See. You must have seen on your screen also replenishment of nutrients in the soil okay where do we grow the plants we are growing all the plants in the soil fine we keep on growing 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 and what plants are taking plants also need certain uh, things from the soil okay when plants and animals die everyone has to die everyone the ones who has born will definitely die so when plants and animals die certain microorganisms like uh, bacteria and fungi feed on the dead remains of plants and animals and help them to rot okay and rotting release the nutrients back into the soil in the form of humus you must have heard humus khad and uh, there are two ways of increasing the fertility of the soil because uh, if we keep on growing plants every time without any lapse of time, what happens? All the nutrients which are present in the soil, they are over, they are no more. So we have to put that nutrients also back in the soil. And the best way to do that is either by adding manure, fertilizers, okay? And Addition of organic fertilizers and manure also increases the fertility of the soil. In case the soil is not fertile, you will not be able to have a good yield of crop. So, the soil has to be very fertile in order the, pl in order the plant grows well. In case the fertility, the soil is not fertile, the plant won't be able to grow properly. So, a very important uh, requirement of the plant is proper soil which is full of nutrients and fertile soil will not help the plant to grow properly as we, our body also need all the things like proteins vitamins we all need carbohydrates there are different components of food which we need same way plants also need different things to grow although they will grow but not properly okay so plants also need proper nutrients to grow and all the nutrients it will get from the soil so the soil has to be very fertile it has to be full of nutrients so that whenever the plant is planted over there it is grown properly okay so we should avoid using chemical fertilizers also always remember whenever you want to increase the fertility of soil you can add manure you can add humus but please avoid using chemical fertilizers because after some time they start causing disadvantage okay there are a lot of disadvantages of that because the chemicals they get into a body and we eventually what happens we start losing our immunity we start falling ill frequently so chemical fertilizers should be used but to a certain extent so this was all today i hope you have understood the chapter thank you